Good morning, good morning and welcome to morning prayer. I hope that this finds you pleasantly surprised by the quantity of sunshine this morning. Isn't it glorious? It's also quite cold, but you can't win them all, as they say. This morning's morning prayer uh, will use, I've got Psalm 146 in front of me, and then um, a bit along from where we were with Genesis 1 last week, we're in Genesis 6 beginning at verse 11 and then we slide into Genesis 7. Uh, so that's where our reflections take us this morning. Good morning Barbara, good to see you online. Right, we'll take a moment of quiet just soak up God's presence this morning with us and commit ourselves wholly to him. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. And so we pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So Psalm 146. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live will I praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. In that day all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign for ever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. And so we pray, Lord of all, our breath and our being come from you, yet our earthly end is dust. As you loose the bound and feed the hungry, so bring us in your mercy through the grave and gate of death to the feast of eternal life where you reign for evermore. Amen. Excuse 
Yeah. So Genesis 6, beginning at verse 11, and this is going to run through to Genesis 7, 10. It's quite a long passage. I'm tempted to say, are you sitting comfortably? I hope you are. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its width, 50 cubits, its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which there is breath and life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark, to keep them alive with you, they shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds, of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come in to you and keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this, he did all that God commanded him. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came on the earth, and Noah with his wife, sons and his wife his son's wives went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came on the earth. And leave the story there this morning. I am reasonably sure that that sense of the earth being filled with violence is probably strong in the mind of many of us these days. Um, seems to predominate in the news, doesn't it? Violence, whether it's violence in this country, violence elsewhere, violence between nations, between individuals. There is corruption I guess that we can't deny and you wonder don't you how God views that violence that corruption today of course mm. the end of this story is uh, that covenant that he mentions in here that is mentioned here in Genesis I will establish my covenant with you it's a covenant that involves a rainbow and God has made that covenant and it made that covenant in a way that uh, makes 
clear that never again will he flood the earth to the same extent. I often view and talk about the Bible um, and, and particularly the Old Testament as stories of God in action, how people have um, storified, interpreted um, God's actions in the world um, over thousands of years. And the archaeological record um, shows us that the, um, the flood event is, um, is a factual thing. Um, there are all sorts of um, communities, um, I think it's the, no I'm not going to say it because it's probably wrong, um, but there are, are some of the very old um, early written texts that talk about uh, a flood event in other cultures, not just the Christian faith. So there was obviously something that happened and the way people have interpreted it um, is God's um, fed upness with the corruption of the earth. That's how uh, Jews and Muslims and Christians all interpret that event. And this uh, is our inherited text for that. How do we look at it through the eyes of people who know Jesus? <coughs> I was reading this morning, <coughs> just briefly, because I haven't had much time. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm clogging my throat and all that. Um, reading this morning about um, St Augustine um, likening the door in the side of the ark uh, to um, Jesus' side on the cross and the way it was opened up. And of course his death allowed us, enabled us to enter into uh, a relationship with God um, through his death, through his resurrection. And there was that opening up of Jesus uh, so that we can and have our um, personal relationship with Jesus. And St Augustine linked that to this story in the Old Testament. Um, and you can see, can't you, how that sense of uh, the ark being uh, a body that contains all human life. Um, is echoed in what we know of Jesus, that Jesus's death and resurrection welcomed in all human life. Um, okay, depending on which um, uh, paragraph you're reading, and there are reasons for that, um, two by two, possibly in seven pairs. Um, but there's that set, sense of people being set aside and brought into safety, obviously with uh, Noah and his family and a lot of food. Um, Jesus welcomes us in. Jesus draws us into himself as a place of safety. And also through the Holy Spirit, we now acknowledge that God enters into us through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's it's a two-way thing now for us, isn't it? God welcomes us into his presence day by day, week by week, uh, not just on Monday mornings at nine o'clock, uh, and yeah, draws us to himself. And then gives us that place of safety in the storms of life. So I invite you this morning to be drawn into Jesus Christ through his uh, death and rising again uh, as a place of safety from the waters uh, of conflict and violence and corruption that flood the earth. We are faithful to Christ as God is faithful to us in Jesus. Then we will be welcomed in and we will be protected. <clears throat> oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the peoples. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. And so we say the Benedictus. Do join me if you have the words in front of you. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. And the tender compassion of our God the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so we give thanks, O Lord, for the fact that uh, you are witness to through the stories of the Old Testament carried from generation to generation and then written down. We give thanks that you are a God of protection who draws us to yourself as a place of safety made possible through the loving sacrifice and rising again of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray, Lord, that we might be drawn into your presence this day and this week, knowing you as our Lord and Saviour, seeing your protection and welcoming your presence around us reminded of St. Patrick's breastplate, that famous prayer, my God is all around us. So we pray that for each other this week, Lord. Whatever we're doing, wherever we are, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, Lord. your world, the world that humanity has corrupted and broken by its violence in thought, word and deed. We pray, Lord, for your healing, for your setting aside of those things that cause conflict. Push them away from people, Lord. Draw people from the brink of further violence. Help them to understand that tit for tat, violence helps no one. And actually only talking to each other, learning to live alongside our neighbours setting aside greed for power and money. Only that is the way forward to peace. A peace that comes through your presence, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities, Lord. 
those who struggle to put food on the table to heat their homes on this frosty morning. For those of us who are comfortable, warm and feel protected. For those whose work or life keeps them outside in the cold, metaphorically or physically. Lord, reach into the hearts of our community to bind it together so that one can share warmth and love with another, that each understands the concerns of another, that we are able to open up, up and offer a warmth of hospitality in our lives, in our churches, in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those known to us who are struggling with ill health at this time who carry the weight of difficult diagnoses, who care for others, who make, through no fault of their own, increasing demands on their time, their energy. We pray for the bereaved, those who are struggling with the loss of someone dear to them, be that friend or family, Lord, bind up the broken-hearted, heal the sick, comfort the afflicted, give courage and patience, and be with all those who care, be it part of their job or just part of who they are and what they do in life, that they might know with those they care for, your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so that ends our prayers for today. Uh, now, one thing I forgot to put in the newsletter is um, for the foreseeable future, there won't be online prayers on a Wednesday. Um, Jane is um, about to move house and is taking a step back for a period. Um, so it will just be me on Mondays and Derek on Fridays. I will put a note up, I should have put it in the newsletter, apologies, um, but um, that's uh, where we are at the moment. Go well, God bless. <laughs>